What's up, Real Agent Nation? I am Blake Corey. This is Michael Wickham. We're here at our newest project in Menifee, California. We're actually gonna be breaking this entire project down for you guys, because one of the biggest things I get asked all the time is, Blake, how do you know how to cherry pick? Like, how do you know which deals to actually go and cherry pick the best? What is the best? And how do you know what to list? Like what listing the rest actually looks like. So Michael and I are gonna be walking you guys through this house right now, breaking it all down. So let's get started. Look at the, look at the amount of trash. A little bit of like, work. Look, I cannot believe that the, the seller actually, mind you, the seller packed up a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I, from what I hear, he's a, he's a, like a tow truck, uh, not a, what, what's the drivers? Yeah, he yeah. did a loads. Driver, yeah. yeah. And mind you, he took a load with him and then left all this stuff. It's absolutely am amazing. Part of like, the job. Part of the job, I guess it is. All right, so this is all. So is this a is this an add-on in here? Uh, yeah, it was an addition. Okay. Um, will you make sure the contractor takes that down yep. because it's not going? It'll be an it'll be an appraisal issue later, but it, I don't. It doesn't add any value. It's not complete, and we're not going to complete it. So let's go ahead and, and make sure we get that gone, um, which means all that's got to go as well. Yeah. So we'll take this all the way back to a two-car garage. Leave. I guess we could leave these for storage, right? Um, he mentioned taking out some of the old ones and swapping out with the good stuff over here, just so it's kind of all... Fair enough. As best as they can do, let's just bring it back to garage status. Fair enough? Yep. Okay, cool. Still more trash. It's unbelievable. Knock, knock. All right. Just want to make sure nobody's behind the door. All right, so what's going... So talk to me. What's going on with the floor. It's going to be new flooring, LP, LVP? LVP flooring. That'll get okay. done once renovations are complete. Just keep it nice. The okay. kitchen just got pulled down. So that'll be up within probably the next seven to 14 days. All right. So that's going to be all new cabinetry built in here. Brand new. Brand new cabinetry is going headed to be put in here. Okay, cool. Awesome. So headed to, so all new cabinetry is going to be put in here. Those appliance, if they're operational, we'll keep them. We'll have the cleaning company clean them up really good because there are stainless steel. Yep. I mean, did they leave anything? Any dirty plates? Oh, no dirty plates. Unfortunately. Right? right, so, okay, cool, awesome. So all new cabinetry, it's getting painted. Uh, all right, let's keep going. All right, so, well, at least they got the roof fixed. So were you here originally when they actually, so originally, I saw, the, I, I saw it when we walked through, there was a tarp looking thing up here. Like you could see the hole in the ceiling. Oh yeah. And I was like, so yeah, modified sunroof. Good call. Yeah. Good call. <laughs> All right. So is that a wall unit? Yep. All right. So is that what's getting going on? removed? That is getting removed. That's yep. going to get fixed up. All that kind of stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. Because is, here's my question, you know, out there we need to look at it, but that AC unit looks pretty rough. Is that here because that AC unit isn't working or is that ACE, is that wall mount just additional because they got really hot with all the stuff that they had in the house. I mean, originally that's where the living room was at. So it kind of pointed directly at the seating area. So it could be a mixture of both. Okay. In case you don't know this, let me at least guide you. There's a couple rules when we go and acquire the house, which you probably already know, but since you're new into this role, it, for, for me anyway, let me explain to you. So HVAC, no. HVAC and roof are big, ticket I, like massive ticket you think about sure. this this is gonna be five grand shoot that's what the flooring and the paint and di different yeah. things cost so when you're looking at a unit this old and you see that type of corrosion that is a concern immediately that this unit is non-operational plus the evidence of that being in the window makes me believe that this doesn't even work or pump out cold air so one thing we want to do when we buy the house when we have that inspection done they need to make sure if they don't check anything else, they got to check these big ticket items, which you can even do from the outside. So when, when you see that, that right there, most likely is dog urine that disintegrated this. I've so I, yeah, I've done this so long. Go right to the corner, lift the leg and there you go. Right. So we need to make sure immediately that we get that checked out. Okay. So as soon as the contractor is here next, make sure he checks that out to verify that that's actually working and operational Absolutely. outside of that looks pretty looks like they're getting things together on the outside cleaning up yep. all right so let's go back in by the way before we go in what's going on with this what was the decision here it's going to get refinished if 
it stays at its absolute basic. Um, he threw some ideas across me. It's just making sure that it all fits inside of the cost. But, okay. you know, the original plan was simply to sand, paint, make it look nice again. Take the fan down, fans not to code. Um, so remove the ceiling fan, kind of looks clunky anyways. But, is there uh, any way we could, and it might save us some money, is there any way to go about... Pushing the top off? Getting these off and putting almost that garden mesh. Like, like a it's shade a mesh. cover? Yeah, yeah. Like, like you've seen it even at... We've already, yeah, we yeah. talked about it. Okay, because that'll bring some natural light in here. That'll bring more lighting into this side yeah. of the house, providing some nice shade, but not being so enclosed like this. So maybe just refinish the beams. And then refinish the beams. Paint them take this these off put that mesh really easy down get rid of this bring it up to code but yeah i mean that way you don't have to sand that should save some money yeah. that no sanding on this stuff i mean still standing and sealing this that, yeah but bring some lighting into that sure all right cool awesome yep. let's keep going all right all right all right all right so everything's looking good in here. One thing you guys got to realize is this. Certain key things as we go through the house, like, you know, you're looking for that are going to be big ticket. You know, when we did the HV or when we did the air, air conditioning condenser outside, you look for those, ev that evidence that says, oh, this is going to be a big ticket item. And so part of modeling this, when you have to make a deal very fast, you can't necessarily have contractors come in and give you an accurate quote. That's why part of the uh, deal analyzer that we use, we use the square footage of the home and it's up to our acquisition specialist, like Michael, he's part of the acquisition team when he goes in to be able to quickly grade this and say, okay, this is a grade four. We need quite a bit of repairs, probably some big ticket items that aren't working. And we've seen the accuracy within just three to 5% of our estimate on the deal analyzer once contractors actually get in here and give us a full blown estimate. So when making deals, when cherry picking the very best deals, it's all about having cash and the ability to close quickly. That's why it's important to have hard money or private financing put together already before you ever walk into a home because when opportunities are there, you got to strike. So, all right, so what's going on up here? Master bedroom. And you see getting painted all throughout. All cool. cabinets will be refinished. Uh, he's going to drop in some new sinks, tub, shower, all really good condition. So just some simple cleaning, recalking, okay. kind of bring it back to life. But okay, for cool. the most part, pretty quick fix inside of the inside of the master bedroom. Bathroom. Is that is that all? Is that tile work in the shower, or is that the plastic insert? Do you know? I forget. Let's see. Is that, is that tile or plastic? No, it's fiberglass. It's fiberglass, cool. Yep. So for those of you guys who don't know, when it comes to fiberglass inserts inside of tubs, like a tub shower combo, yep. sometimes it's just a shower, most people think they need to be replaced. You know, a lot of contractors will say, hey, this needs to be replaced and we need to put tile or whatnot, but that's actually not the case. A really easy solution to making it look brand new is to having it refinished. Yep. And you can find this done for about $350 to $450, depending upon where you are yep. in the country. And I found that to be a uh, amazing solution because once it's refinished, it has a beautiful, vibrant, white, shiny look like you're dealing with new tile, but without the cost. Yep. So keep that in mind. When you see fiberglass, when you see what looks to be plastic or fiberglass, and you look at it, you don't need to be sold a bag of goods like, hey, it needs to be removed. You can absolutely refinish it. Yeah. I don't know if you remember pictures, but another hole right here that was fixed and replaced. Okay. All right. Looks like they did a really good drywall work. Like they right. matched it very, very good. Yeah. Looked like a meteor came through. So yeah. I'd say pretty good job. All right. So pretty good job. One of the guest bedrooms. Closet doors are just down right now for painting, but again, pretty simple. All overhead lighting's going back, yeah? Yep. All right, perfect. Yep, matching ceiling fans, just keep it unisex all throughout. Okay. Bathroom here, same thing. Shower, decent shape, so some basic cleanup, bring it back to life. Oh, all right, so if you guys look at, this is what we're talking about. I'm gonna open this up real quick. These guys might kill me, but like this right here. If you look, it looks like tile, it looks like tile but it's not tile. 
that is fiberglass. And depending upon the condition that this is in, this could have small minor cracks, this could have discoloration, this could have a lot of different things going on with it, but the best and easiest solution is to have a professional company come out and reseal it. Like I said, $350 to $450, and this thing is going to look brand new yeah. and add a lot of great value to it. Yeah. Now the bedroom, closet doors are done in this one. Again, painting, new carpet, ceiling fan to match. It's a wrap in here. Okay, so one thing I wanna point out to you is these windows. So if you don't notice, the, how, see how dark the room got once we walked in? A lot of people don't notice like little things yep. like that. This is actually tinted. So somebody came through and tinted this window. It's not even natural lighting coming in. Could have been done from heat, could have been done for a bunch of different reasons. Sure. But we wanna make sure that we don't have inconsistencies in the product that's produced. So we wanna make sure that a contractor comes in, Remote. kills this tint. Yeah, and we may need to get a screen specialist in here to fix and adjust the screens and make them all functional, operational, and present. It does get hot out here in the desert. So we gotta have some good airflow coming in. Oh, see, so you're already peeling it off, perfect. So that's probably a DIY project that yep. some, somebody did, maybe a kid who lived in this room before put that up, so. Fair enough. Okay, let's keep going. It's amazing when you can actually walk into a room finally. Yeah, right. This one was untouched. But uh, yeah, basic, I mean, little office space, extra bedroom. Pretty much converted what you want. I mean, it's a great selling point when I was, you know, when you look at the houses because number one, you have all your bedrooms upstairs. This could be, you know, mother-in-law staying that can't get upstairs, it could be an office space. So just something for you guys to kind of pay attention to is downstairs bedrooms, really, really unique selling point. A lot of people need them. Yeah, and most people don't even realize this. If you guys look, it's a double door, right? So we have a double door here. Most people think, most people think that this is an office. Because of the double doors, they think it's downstairs, it must be an office, it must be some type of room. But in fact, it is, to Michael's point, a bedroom because of the closets. The closets make it the bedroom. That's how you can immediately see that, no, this is a bedroom somebody can stay in. So that's great. It is a massive selling point because this could be an office, but it also could be a bedroom for someone. So having downstairs bathroom access, being in here, this is a bedroom and you know, we'll leave the double doors obviously. Um, but yeah, the, the huge selling points. So the house is looking good. Um, you know, obviously I know you're gonna go through right now. One thing you guys wanna know, know that when you're starting to do your own deals and you're starting to cherry pick and buy houses like this, if you're renovating them, before you ever make payment to contractors, you actually go through and look at the completion list. So one really cool feature that our contractor has is a partial completion. So yeah. if he's asking for 50% of the drywall payment, it'll say that in the estimate, it'll go 25%, 50%, 75%, or 100% done. Yeah. And what Michael's gonna be going through today is taking the draw request or the payment request and seeing what they're saying is completed and then inspecting through the house to verify we're actually making payment because most, uh, making payment on what's been done because most amateurs get burned this way. Contractor says this is all done. They don't inspect it. And then at that point in time, they're making payment and they're not getting anything in return. That's where they start to get burned. So, uh, you know, Michael, one of the biggest things I wanna teach you is on this and all of our viewers, why buy this house rather than list it? Because we bought it for 425,000 and let's say you put it on the open market, maybe you could've got 450, 475 in its current condition that it was in, but it was in such need of repairs, you couldn't get any financing on it. So it had to be a cash or private transaction. But we're an insider, so we got an insider deal on it. We generated the lead ourselves rather than a broker coming to us. But you know, even at 450, what are you making? You know, let's say on the high side, 3% commission of that, you know, that's about $13,500. Yeah, you could have pocketed that money really quickly, really easily, sure. but this is a perfect deal to cherry pick because we knew it was gonna be about $50,000 worth of repair work, yeah. but when it was redone, man, this thing was gonna be clo worth close to 600,000. So let's break this down for you guys. We bought it for 425,000. We're putting about $50,000 worth of work into the home. We also have some holding costs associated with it because we bought it with no money down. So we do have a loan and we have holding costs associated with it and other miscellaneous fees. So at the end of the day, we're maybe into it for about, right under $500,000. It's worth $600,000 on the market right now, but we're gonna actually put a renter in here for the next 12 months. 
So once we're actually done with it, we put a renter in it, we're gonna refinance, get as, all of our money back out of the house, right? Because you know we're into it for right under five, it's gonna be worth six. We're gonna get all that money yep. back. So now we're gonna be in a lower interest rate loan. We're going to be able to put a renter in here for about $3,000 plus a month. And then from there, that's gonna make the payment. Now, most people are like, well, that's great, but are you cash flowing? Well, most people look at, okay, I pay the mortgage and I have what le what's left over, that's cash flow. But for us being real estate professionals, we get the ability to have a much more massive cash flow, which is the tax depreciation. So we're actually gonna do an advanced depreciation on this through a cost segregation study. And we're estimated to get almost a $200,000 tax break on this house in the first year, but we gotta own it for 12 months, yeah. right? So you're looking at 200,000. Well, if you're at 37% federal tax rate, yeah, look at look how much you're saving. Well, okay, well over $65,000, $70,000 on quick math, $65,000, $70,000 in taxes that you're saving by owning this home. Yep. Plus you have $100,000 in equity. So think about it from this pr perspective. You can either own the asset, get a huge tax break and have all the equity or make about $10,000 in commission. Right? Which one would you rather have? Yeah. yeah, Kiyosaki calls it phantom income. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, there's all this type of income coming in, but it's 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 saving you so much money, and you're making so much more money by cherry picking it. But most agents don't realize that there's cherry picking the best. List the rest. This is not an opportunity to list. You could have, but it's much better to actually look at it from the regards of buying it and cherry picking this house. Absolutely. All right, so that's it for this walkthrough. If you guys are interested to learn more of how to actually acquire, how to actually cherry pick the best, list the rest, and learn this strategy of how to generate motivated sellers into your real estate business, make sure you subscribe to our channel, hit the, hit the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you never miss an update, and I'll see you guys on the other side.